Note that there were other bombs. The seismograph in Oklahoma City that day recorded two distinct blasts from bombs. And listen, now as General Benton K. Parton, United States Air Force General retired, explains it was demolition charges that took down the federal Murrow building down. Mm -hmm. Despite the FBI bogus story of a single bomb. Roll the tape, please. The next segment of this tape was extracted from an Austin, Texas public access cable TV interview with the premier explosive expert, General Benton K. Parton. Remarkably, the pronouncements of General Parton and similar statements of other top experts in the field have either been underplayed or altogether neglected by the media. Uh, General Parton, would you explain to us a little bit about your career in the United States Air Force? I was in the Air Force 31 years, active duty, <clears throat> and I spent 25 years in research and development. Uh, most of that was in the weapons area. I had graduate training in armament engineering. <clears throat> I went to the various laboratories at the uh, Ballistic Research Laboratory, where I designed warheads. In fact, I did the design and development work for the first Beaumont warhead there. Mm -hmm. I had experience blowing up targets and all kinds of terminal ballistics and knowing what the explosives will do and what they won't do. I moved on into the Air Force Systems Command. I was the commander of the Air Force Armament Technology Laboratory, which uh, covered all that area for the Air Force. I was the first chairman of the, uh, in the Office of the Secretary of Defense of the Air Munitions Requirements and Development Committee, which was harmonizing the requirements for all air-delivered weapons for the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps. So I spent 25 years uh, in all areas of uh, Air Force armament work and have had a lot of experience in uh, combat damage evaluation also. So I know what you can do with explosives, what you can't do. When I first looked at the, the reports coming out of Oklahoma, I knew that the truth was not coming out. The media was, uh, was very much confused or passing out disinformation, and I think some of the officials down there were putting out disinformation, and what was going on down there was totally uh, at odds with what I had uh, 25 years experience of knowing. Okay. So I got all the information I could together and uh, took a look at it and ran some analyses, put the damage profiles on the building, and, and I concluded that there was a very high probability and a high level of confidence that was, there were demolition charges in the building. Uh, and I uh, wrote, I felt it was very important that the Senate and the House move to have an independent investigation in Oklahoma City because it needed to be established without question uh, whether and how many uh, demolition charges were in that building because it's an entirely different story if you had a bunch of demolition charges in the building in contradistinction to an ammonia nitrate truckload out in front of the building. General. Could a truckload of ammonium nitrate in the configuration that the government says it was have done the damage to the building? Absolutely not. A general pardon. Let's say that uh, for argument, that bomb was professionally made, uh, it was fused right, timed right, everything was done as an expert munition expert would have done it. Just what would have been the damage to the building and would that have been possible if it was all correctly done with that truck bomb? Very light damage. General, with your background in explosives and munitions, uh, what's your speculation of what actually happened in Oklahoma City? I, I don't want to speculate. I want to tell you what happened. And as I said, I, I went to literally hundreds and hundreds of pictures that were covering uh, the removal of the debris uh, from the building site. And I was looking for those specific locations and the, and the columns at those specific locations where my analysis through said you would have had to have had a demolition charge at. And uh, going through those, as they were clearing the site, all those uh, demolition uh, charge positions were clearly revealed, clearly revealed. Now, for the television audience, I have a number of charts here, but I'll talk through them and sure. people can understand what is being said. Sure. Uh, the, first, the first picture shows the, real, the building down there just a few seconds before the blast. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can see the cars, uh, the light poles, with some aluminum, there's an aluminum light pole fairly close to it. 
And the next picture shows, uh, it's taken about 35, 33 minutes after the uh, demolition, mm -hmm. and there's a little aluminum light pole that's over there very close to the building. It's still standing. The sign that was over here, the signs are gone, but the frame is still across the street. Uh, the frame, the pole that was on is gone. And you have this monstrous gapping side of the building removed. I don't care what was in the truck. It wasn't whether it was a high uh, energy military explosive or whether it was ammonia nitrate. Either case, you would not have had the energy to do to the building what was done both from an order of magnitude as well as the pattern of destruction. <clears throat> okay. Now, for the benefit of the TV viewers, let me show a chart of the vertical profile of the building. This chart shows across the A row, A, uh, the columns in red are not down. That was A2 through A8 are all down. Mm -hmm. And in the second row, column B3 is down. Mm -hmm. Before I knew precisely the location, and when I sent the letters to the Senate and the House, I put the truck bomb out where it was supposed to be, and I showed a sphere of ammonium nitrate about four feet in di four and a half feet in diameter, mm -hmm. with a pressure of a half a million pounds. By the time it reaches the first column, you are down below, uh, you are down around two thousand pounds per square inch. By the time it reaches the second row of columns, you're you're down around uh, somewhere between uh, two hundred eighty-five and forty. Well. Just beyond the B column, you're, you're in the 40-pound region. <clears throat> and from there, if you reach out to, out to A7 from that location, you're down around 11 pounds per square inch. And the A7 was a very, very massive and heavy column. There's absolutely no way. Now, what a, the heck you could have brought it down from there. But I say this. The maximum reach of the, of the bomb would have been into B3 because that's where the column came down. Mm -hmm. But the, col the bomb, truck bomb, was not in front of column A3. It was over beyond column A4. And column B4 and B5 in the, in the middle row would have seen a lot more impulse than the column B3, which came down. In fact, it would be about twice as much impulse as column B3. And uh, so if you were going to bring down a column, it would have been B3 or B4 or B5, and certainly not B3. You don't have to go any further than that to know that you had a demolition charge on column B3. Now, if you look at those columns, uh, they have furring strip on them, and they have uh, sheetrock on them. Mm -hmm. And the sheetrock and, and furring strips are still on them. Uh, down at the, at the first and second floor, some of the sheetrock and furring strips have been knocked off, but you see absolutely no spalling damage to those columns. So uh, columns a lot closer than B3 to the bomb, truck bomb, mm -hmm. still have uh, sheetrock and furring strips around them that weren't even knocked off. Now, you can't think about bringing down a, a, a column by blast uh, without cleaning that sort of stuff off if you had the power to, to collapse that kind of size of a column. So it you had don't need to go any further than that to know that B3 had a demolition charge. There's no other explanation. It's a closed set. General, you're telling me that somebody drilled those columns and then placed explosives on the columns? Well, they don't need to have drilled it. They could just have taped the satchel charge up against that column and, 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 would have, and have brought it down. But, General, we had a bomb outside. We had a demolition crew inside. How many personnel do you think were involved in this operation? Well, it would have taken several, and it would have taken people with access. Now, you got to remember that those federal buildings have uh, guards on the gate, and they have magnetometers and everything else. So it's not only a matter of how many people, but who had access. That's the problem. General, is there anything we haven't discussed or have overlooked here? I wanted to point out, I say there were four demolition charges inside the building. Okay. And I pointed out that there was one at the junction of the header uh, with the column uh, A7. There was also one at the junction of column A3 and A5 and at B3. Now for the television audience, I have a chart that shows uncovered the evidence. Uh, right here you can see the area has been cleaned out around column B3 and it was destroyed by demolition charge, appears to be a charge uh, destroyed by demolition charge, at the third floor level. You can see the rebar sticking up above uh, what remains of the concrete column. 
there's no <clears throat> other extensive damage around uh, on the column. It's just where the detonation wave uh, pressure ran out, and the uh, the granular de uh, destruction of that column petered out, but you still have the rebar still sticking up. Now, at the header, it's been uncovered. It went across. That's a, about a three foot by five foot, or a little less than that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you can see column A3 standing up. There is no spoliation on it. You can see the rebar sticking out of the top. You can see the Art Deco rings around the column. And uh, that was the demolition charge at A3. Peeled out the concrete from the rebar down just a little below, the, below that header. And you can see on the right side, the header to the right, you can see where the rebar is completely exposed and the, and the uh, concrete is outside of the uh, zone from in around that rebar. General Pardon, can you give us your conclusion to these matters? My conclusion is that there had to have been those three militia charges in the building at A3, A5, and A7, okay. and at column B3. Okay. Now, when I went to, when I wrote the letter to the House, I said it was perfectly possible for that to have been done because those columns were available for two people from the street. And I expected when I looked at it, if it had been some outside job, the demolition charges would have been at the base of B3, B5, and B7. But they weren't. They were up at the third floor level, which says those charges were on the third floor. And you look at the end of the column there, uh, look at the end of the beam over at column a7 uh, mm -hmm. and uh, you can see at the top of that column you had more destruction than you did at the bottom mm -hmm. in other words the, the uh, demolition charge was on top of the column at that juncture inside of the building and not outside of the building why were they in such a hurry to bring the building down well i can say that we don't know who uh, who did the damage down there but i know who's covering it up they not only brought the building down, they cleared out the site, they covered the site with dirt, they carted the 200 tons of building over to a, a, a site, and I was under the impression it was a, a raid out for further possible inspection, but we went over to that site, and uh, there were guards at the gates who were not permitted to enter, and we were told by the people at the site that all the material was buried. They dug holes and buried it. So the conclusions of your investigation is that there's another classic cover-up going on. Obviously. Obviously. It's a classic cover-up. A classic cover-up. After watching that, can you trust your FBI or any federal government agency? I don't think so, Susan. After watching that, can you trust your FBI or any federal government agency? I don't think so, Susan.